So welcome to a new class now, right? In biosystematics. So we, I think, it's going to be the first class, right? Yes. And last week we have taken it uh, by Monisha Ma'am have taken one class, right? So let's see what is this about. So this is going to be a very exciting class that you are going to learn about your nature. Okay. So you can, uh, you will be. We are expecting you to go out, discover the nature, and try to understand the diversity in this campus as well as in. For example, near your hostel and for the boys' hostel, as well as in our new campus, you can go and see the kinds of uh, insects we have, and the kinds of plants we have, and the kinds of you know birds we have flocking here in the campus. Okay, and also about the microbes in your, for example, on your breath. What kinds of microbes do we have? So all of these we are going to see in this class. Right. So now, as you know, this class. Okay, so this is a course website. As usual, all of my classes is having a website. Okay, so course website where you can actually see, download all the PowerPoint presentations and papers and uh, assignments of your peers, the last batch students, what kind of assignments they have done, and uh, you know, links to papers, books, and websites. All of these, uh, as well as the multimedia contents that you can download from the course website. Okay. So instead of remembering this one, simply search my name in Google, that is Felix Foss, and uh, click on the first link that will lead you to my site here, where actually you have to click here, okay, on the biosystematics and biodiversity, where the, a, a syllabus is presented below the course logistics, and here you can see, download the, whatever the presentations we have it, as well as the other materials that, uh, you know, all of these data for the previous year is available. So that's an excellent place to start up okay so for my next class for example you can download the presentations today itself one week ahead and you know prepare yourself and uh, then come to the class for that right mm -hmm. so well we don't have any textbook for this biosystematics because this systematics and taxonomy is now we uh, you know it's kind of an old fashion that is what people normally say but of course that is the core of biology and that's the reason why this university have started up this course okay so basic biology books and i suggest you to go and take up the class 10 k2 books on biology some of you must be having some relatives who is studying in plus two right so botany especially and zoology well, like for example in fluorescence right the flower structure what are the flower what are the features to look for for identifying a particular flower variety okay so all those matter you have to look at that plus two standard plus two book and for such a long time i could guess almost three years for most of you you haven't seen that book really right so let's start from the very basic okay and then you can also look at this kind of books basic textbooks on biology on the parts on uh, you know biosystematics as well as botany books and zoology books and microbiology books all of these books are having excellent uh, chapters on the classification and taxonomy of these living beings okay so you have to go and uh, read those books as well okay and there is another book of, authored by myself is coming up probably in two months so that this part is going to cover for the animal systematics as part of this course okay so this is only for the animals and for the plants and microbes you will still have to look at those books okay so that is what it is as you can see this is me here well we are all animals right and this is my wife and i have a daughter okay she is one and a half years old this is my daughter okay fine of course you will have to you know i don't know you have attended this one i normally start my class with explaining how to take notes and there is an excellent method and this method is something called coronal method okay so i hope everybody should have one notebook okay ruled notebook mostly and if this is a page okay so the biggest part of this one on the on the right quarter this is the place where you jot, jot down the notes when someone is taking class not just for this class for every class as well as when you read a new uh, book for example or read a new article for example this is a place where you have to make the notes okay be very concise and use a lot of abbreviations that you are very comfortable with okay and use a lot of illustrations here that looks the you know that note looks very nice if you use a lot of illustrations 
and that is what you know it will uh, etch in your memory forever if you put some kind of nice illustrations as well okay and this is the place where you put cues so after the class okay when you revise it review it so this is the place where you will have to put some main ideas and uh, you know uh, uh, the cue section for the main idea or connecting points or diagram those kind of stuff you can put on the left side okay and the terms for example that we are going to cover in the class and this one is the summary page summary is after the class again for the review time just sum up one entire page of the notebook in one sentence or two sentences is that clear so th this is very very uh, beneficial way very very successful way of taking notes so of course the notes are very important right for any classes so that is what and for the schedule is concerned for this class it's on Friday's fifth period that is right now fifth period 130 220 right at row number 11 and of course there is a tutorial hour also that hour I'm going to use it for interaction if you have any questions and to conduct the quiz for example and help you solve the ass assignments and uh, quiz programs okay so uh, as well as to discuss about our uh, you know question paper for for example the first session second and third session and all these we are going to use for that hour and also that hour uh, we can also you if uh, if I miss a class for example that I can conduct in that time okay first session I'm expecting by 7th of October then comes 11th uh, that is uh, November is second session third session in the December then January okay every month you have one exam well I'm going to allocate you the term paper topics by next week okay so that is what the term paper and uh, you will have to uh, use some for example uh, around 10 a4 sheets and there is no such limit of the length okay so you can if you if you're comfortable you can use less as well but be very concise okay and um, I will not entertain any plagiarism okay so no copy paste you will have to write in your own way and I don't mind having a lot of mistakes for example grammar mistake spelling mistakes I understand most of my students are from Punjab right is there anyone okay you are from Jammu and Kashmir that's all right anyone else from uh, far down south or something you where are you from Rajasthan again okay, it's very near right so almost every everybody is quite close by isn't it then well quiz I'm going to take up a lot of quiz and that's going to be very general okay it's there is a syllabus for quiz I can ask any questions on that okay so to solve in this quiz and to perform good in class it's not that simply download my presentations from the site and uh, review it that is not the method the method is that you have to read more okay read more popular science journals that we are having in the library okay those or uh, those things you will have to see and this is just an overview of the syllabus okay uh, in this syllabus you know general introduction to systematics well that is what I'm going to start up today then overview of plan and algal systematics that I will I will brief up okay in the uh, next class then animal systematics Dr. Monisha is going to deal that one that part and microbial again I will deal that matter then nat natural history of Indian subcontinent by Dr. Monisha right and then overview of biodiversity that again I'm going to deal that so it's like a mixture and two teachers are going to teach you this course right and there are several related online courses and you can register yourself so together with this course you can earn more credits and of course these are not actually universities not recognizing these credits but still you can earn an approved course and they will send you a statement of purpose if you successfully complete those courses and now uh, uh, you know there are so these are called what MOOC right massive open uh, online courses three courses pertinent to this particular course of uh, one is what plan knows and that's a very excellent course by course then zoology and botany from sailor that is very basic so you can go and check out that uh, sites as well okay so what plan knows and other things you didn't know about the plants by Tel Aviv University I have seen some of these videos and these are really excellent and this is for only for the botany you must be knowing, right simple plant of, of physiology as well as the tag classification that is taxonomy you can find it in this particular MOC site then other general resources are uh, including access to the popular science journal I always say that you have to read this popular science to increase your uh, 
you know the uh, normal knowledge on the science what is happening in today's scientific world and what are the new new publications coming up right catch up with what is going on in the world right now okay so rather than just reading the old textbook uh, these are very important resources that will help you immensely okay uh, some including scientific american and new scientist those are internationally well known and we have the subscribed copy here and resonance is another very excellent quali quality uh, popular science journal published from uh, indian academy of sciences from bangalore high standard uh, you can also subscribe that uh, thing for your house it's very easy okay around 200 rupees for one year these are these three resources is what i suggest and recommend then you can also subscribe to this something called podcast these are nothing but recorded radio shows where you can listen on your portable devices for example uh, your phone you know or ipod some of you must be having ipod or the computer normal computer you can listen these uh, radio shows okay so out of which these three shows are my favorite one is naked scientist podcast that is by welcome trust and cambridge university so this is a very interesting podcast okay uh, well these are all talk shows right then nature podcast by the nature magazine okay and then npr science friday podcast by national public radio that is the us equivalent of our all india radio okay so then this is very important that during the time of taking this class also or after the class just go and click here student feedback section of the course website and write your opinion about this class okay uh, everything whatever you want to say criticize me no issue but i would like to hear it to improve myself okay so there i am not asking your name for that okay simply go and uh, write whatever you like way and then submit it so that i will be able to see that and review it and correct my mistakes if i did something okay so that is what student feedback but this is uh, very important once you complete this course okay that time i think you will be in a better position to judge uh, this class right and also if you have some suggestions which you would like to send me anonymously you can use this site okay fine for today we are going to deal with you know a general introdu introduction to the discipline of biosystematics you know semantics what is semantics semantics deals with uh, you know meanings of the word right so take up your semantic skills for biosystematic what is the meaning of that word so to to know the meaning of this word you have to know that word right it is etymology is what you call the word history okay now if you look at this this word is comprised of two parts bio and systematics right so the, it is about the all systematic points of the biology that is what the bio systematics is right even that term is not very standard to be sure it's just a fancy word more common word or more appropriate word is systematics simple systematics or taxonomy and systematics okay so those are what it is right so systematics as systematic taxonomy is commonly called is a study of biological diversity so well even this definition as such it's no like textbook definition or something just for the sake of defining we put this kind of definition okay so we have immense biodiversity in planet earth right so what are the evolution uh, in in place and why this this uh, diversity is so much related interrelated so that is some of the questions that the systematicists or taxonomists are attempting to solve okay so evolution of the biodiversity is exactly what this systematicists are looking after while taxonomy deals with naming as well as classification of the biodiversity so we will have to name each organism you know in latin right normally in uh, binomial nomenclature right so all of these things what the taxonomy is dealing with okay and there is yet another term called phylogeny what it is dealing with it's evolutionary history of the the organisms right so how these organisms have been evolving from time immemorial from one organism how this uh, you know great biodiversity on planet earth have formed so those are some of the uh, topics that phylogeneticists are looking for okay so systematic taxonomy that is actually a part of this systematic taxonomy in fact all these disciplines are highly interlinked 
okay now if you say what the classification is it's very simple it's an arrangement of organisms to orderly groups you are putting in the orderly group right order 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 so based on their similarities so most similar will be you know species then genus then family then order right so this this kind of you know organizational grouping of the diversity of our earth right then classification and taxonomy these are all synonym right there is no textbook definition or textbook differences between these two terms okay systematics or taxonomy these are all uh, you know quite in interlinked or uh, classification and taxonomy right and taxonomist is the term to say who uh, someone who is working on the field of taxonomy plant taxonomist is the person who can identify accurately the plant varieties while microbial taxonomist you know those who are looking for the micro to identify mainly for the field identification okay if you say you are an animal taxonomist so everybody expect you to identify animals right so and there are several things several insight you know for for example mammals right so there are, there is a, some special terms for those people who are specialized in reptiles for example uh, okay so or uh, you know plants in sense algae for example Okay, all these have their own names that we will come up in this class later as well. You know, these are some of the benefits for classifying. What are the benefits? First one is uniformly named organism. So there is a uniformity among the world taxonomists. If you name it in Hindi, for example, uh, people from Sweden cannot understand the Hindi, cannot even read that language, right? Uh, you cannot even have it in English. Why not in English? Because there are so many people who don't know English also. Then why it is Latin or why it is Greek? Greek and Latin, uh, uh, you know, most of the names are based on Latin, right? Some are in Greek also, but mostly Latin. Why it is Latin? Because we we don't know Latin. But still, that is a kind of a consensus formed in 17th century. Okay, the Linnaeus when he started, he wanted to have a common language. And for him, Latin seems to be a fine language. Okay, Latin for them is like our Sanskrit. It's an ancient language and it's almost dead. Nobody is using Sanskrit here, right? Except in the radios, uh, you know, you can see that Sanskrit news, right? Other than that, nobody is using Sanskrit in India. Just like that, Latin in Europe, it used to be the, uh, you know, language of the church, okay? Catholic church. But right now, nobody is using except in uh, the binomial nomenclature. Okay? And it prevents misnomers. Misnomer is a word that have, you know, that seems to be signifying a, word, a, a meaning, but that is a wrong meaning. Okay? An example of uh, misnomer is starfish. You know, starfish that is, uh, you know, like a star, it normally in the, in the uh, floors of ocean, right? The starfish which is not really a fish, you know, and jellyfish, again, it's not a fish at all, jellyfish is, uh, uh, you know, Nidarian, that's a separate group of uh, zoological classification, right, and th the starfish is, anyone, echinodermata, right, echinoderm, right, so these are not actually fish, which is a vertebrate, right, fish is, comes under vertebrate, so that is why, well, then uniformity in language, that is what I explained here, Latin or some are in Greek uh, for all names. So, in that way, there is a uniformity. Okay? And Latin as such, it is not really a Latin also. It needs to be having consistency of Latin. Okay? So, the grammatical structure of Latin, the word should have. Not all words are in Latin. You can put any names for the organisms, but it should have the end endings in Latin the Latin, eponyms in the Latin, right? Well, it's just an example, it could be anything, right? Any organism, for example, a cat, okay? So, you know, what I call a cat, for example, pucha, that is in Malayalam, pucha for a cat, or neko in Japanese, okay? Or, you know, of course, cat. And what do you call in Punjabi? Billy is Hindi. Punjabi is also Billy. And uh, how about you? You were from uh, Rajasthan, right? And what do you call Billy? And from uh, Jammu and Kashmir? Brewer. Huh? Brewer. Brewer. Yeah. So if you say that kind of brewer and netko, pucha, billy, 
cat so many different things right but if someone say it is felis domesticus then everybody in the world understand right but all these terms are only for some specific groups right felis cactus to be exact it's it, it's no more called felis domesticus okay it has been renamed to felis cactus okay so that is uh, that is the beauty of that for a, for a summer skunk which is not seen here it looks like a, a squirrel right squirrel for indians memphitis mephitis and mephitis okay mephitis mephitis is the you know the binomial binomial name binomen these are all same okay binomen right so these are some of the very nice buildings in the world which are in fact dealing with taxonomy and systematics okay so one is that natural history museum in london they have a lot of connection of those samples pertaining to systematics of plants as well as animals okay uh, uh, national museum of natural history in paris as well as royal museum of central africa that is based in belgium Right. so these are some of the institutes of course we have a lot of institutes right and herbaria places where we keep the pressed vouchers of plants right that is a herbaria and mostly this natural history places natural history museums are the places where we keep the animal materials as well in in formalin as of now i'm not aware of any well we do have science museum right in delhi there is a, a place called science museum and in uh, bangalore also they have science museum and uh, well we what we have is something called zoological survey of india and botanical survey of india these two organizations are dealing with uh, botanical systematics and zoological systematics but none of these are having a, a, a nice institution like this this kind of museum well maintained museum we don't have it okay and this even botanical survey of india do not have a well maintained herbaria okay even that is quite strange that we are actually not into the systematics like like in the west or even in the east far east i was in japan for 5 years i know their system so much advanced okay but we really need to have this kind of institution right this is another one very important one called smithsonian institution and that is based in washington in the us but they are also having excellent collection of uh, animal you know you can see these are bottles right small small bottle like our pickle bottle and these you know different kinds of animals as well as marine animals are preserved here in formalin so these are all dead but preserving formalin will not deteriorate otherwise these uh, animals you know they decompose right It, the formalin makes a decompose decomposition much slower so it can survive for a century or more than a century in formalin okay well the problem with that this uh, field is that people interpret this taxonomy as a glorified form of filing like in office we file it documents we simply file it or we we purchase an album and we file our photographs right so that is just a purely technical work so that is what the impression of most of the scientists what the taxonomy is but that is an incorrect absolutely incorrect way it is not simply filing but we should know the evolutionary history of organism before filing okay so related related organisms are grouped under species and there is a hierarchy and to know exactly this hierarchy you should know the evolutionary legacy of the biodiversity of planet earth okay so unless you know the evolution you cannot accurately group these organisms together okay so this is a famous statement by stephen j gold so this uh, stephen j gold is a, a famous evolutionary biologist from uk uh, he just got uh, you know passed away in 2004 i guess so that is what right yeah this is what you can just have a look and that slide later as well so saying something about the early taxonomies this aristotle right a very famous greek a philosopher aristotle you know people well you can you cannot say that mostly the europeans say he is the father of the discipline of taxonomy in the ancient age but you cannot say that way as well we do have uh, philosophers in india as well right so you know what aristotle have done is that he divided organisms to plants and animals 
okay, almost 2000 years ago, plants and animals. So much more our Vedas, for example, it did say about plants and animals, definitely. So you cannot say this guy is the topmost guy in uh, uh, Aristotle, but Aristotle did say about plants and animals, right? So that is what he subdivided them by their habitat, land, sea, or air dwellers. Okay, but what is the air dwelling plant, for example? Can you think about any a plant which is which is in the you know maybe spores, right? Spores of some of these plants are in the atmosphere. There used to be one famous uh, incident, and not just one incident, many incidents of blood rain. Rain which is purely red color. Okay, this happened in my state, Kerala. And what is that behind it? The color is all red. The entire rain, you know, rain is something like a paint. Okay, but it's of course it's not a blood red, but of course there is some tint, red tinted, okay, uh, rain. And if you have some clothes which we put outside for sun drying, the white cloth turned to be a red cloth after this rain. So this is because of an algae. A terrestrial algae called Trentipolia. Okay, I'm also working on that algae, and I've got some sequence of that algae. That's very interesting. Fine. But anyway, that I was just thinking about this, you know, air-dwelling animal uh, plant, right? Then, uh, is there any animals in the air? Air, air. Like air-dwelling means living in air. Birds, you can say, well, you know, they can fly, or, or animals which can fly, can be an air dwelling, right? Then aquatic, there are several biodiversity uh, aquatic habitats as well, right? So all those kind of things. Yeah, there are several mnemonics that will come across in your course, not just in my class, but all throughout your, you know, student life, that will help you to remember uh, some of these terms, especially for microbiology and all those kind of systematic studies to know which are the groups and which are very tricky kinds of like for example if I ask you what is pi value of pi can someone say yeah 3.14 then what it, it's huge it's almost infinite right you cannot remember all these pi values but if you know some mnemonics at least you can uh, uh, remember some of these uh, one mnemonic is pa you know Socrates Plato and Aristotle what is that? This is a sequence of teachers in Greek philosophy, right? So Socrates was the teacher of Plato who indeed taught Aristotle, something like that, right? So these kind of mnemonics you can actually remember a lot. This value of pi is, you know, this sort of mnemonics, right? A lot of mnemonics are the, you can come across in your, uh, in the internet as well, for example, okay? So Vibgeo is yet another fa uh, famous uh, mnemonic, right? Of course, there are so many things, right? Now, early taxonomist, if I say, John Ray, this name is quite famous here, that uh, he was uh, a botanist and he is the first person to name uh, these organisms in Latin. Okay, so after this uh, John Ray, lots of Latin, you know, everybody became a consensus that everybody agrees upon to, to take names from Latin and to apply Latin grammar on the naming of the plants and animals. Okay, but his names were quite very long discipline, uh, you know, descriptions of those plants and animals. So those names were very, very tedious to remember. Then comes the time of this Carl Linnaeus, right? He was 18th century Swedish taxonomist. Uh, he's from Sweden. You know where the Sweden is, right? Can you tell me where the Sweden is? Which uh, continent is country Sweden is? What is the name? Minu. Okay, can you tell where Sweden is? No idea? Okay, can you? What is your name? Amir. Amrik. Okay, Amrit. Amrit. Okay, Amrit. I know. Uh, can you tell me? And anybody here? Nobody knows where Sweden is? No? Then my assignment today, my assignment to you is at least to know these countries in the world map. Okay, take up a world map. Okay, you must be having an atlas, school atlas in your house. Do you have, how many of you are having an atlas or a world map? Hmm? Okay, so 
okay you are staying in a hostel so still you can buy one atlas and keep it yourself okay so these are very basics and i will put up some some of these kind of very very simple questions general knowledge questions in my quiz okay so make yourself that at least you know where these countries are okay if i ask you to point out where sweden in a world map you should be able to point the place where the sweden which is actually in a north of europe okay the place uh, normally we call it as scandinavia a group of four countries sweden norway denmark and finland all these are very cold place very near to the arctic okay so you know antarctic and arctic right yes antarctica and arctica arctic and antarctic right so where is this antarctic located can you tell me pole which pole is antarctic antarctic is what south pole or north pole yeah so you know you should know right these are very basic and uh, uh, get a copy of an atlas okay or at least a world map and uh, accustom yourself with those countries and where these countries are in all right so this is a person okay so he classified organisms by the structure so he looked at the structure structure is nothing but morphology okay he looked at how it looks like and similar thing they group together that's very simple as that so according to him he group animals plants and minerals as well why minerals fossil for example he thought the fossils to be classified in life sciences but that is actually you know we are as of today we are not following his mineral classification okay so he is a man who is credited of finding or developing a binomial nomenclature right the linnaeus so which is still in used so he is the person normally we call him as the father of the discipline of taxonomy okay so he has authored a book system on nature uh, you know that used to be the most authoritative book on taxonomy in his day okay so he made such an immense contribution so most of the plants and animals that we normally see in our life very common animals and very common plants okay, for example homo sapiens so who named us homo sapiens it's linnaeus and almost every plant you will see will have l ending l ending is basically for linnaeus okay so that is why he is actually the the man behind the discipline of taxonomy and there is a society in london called the linnaean society Okay, so in UK, London, right? So this society is till now, till date, this is the most authoritative society for naming living organisms, and they do have these two journals. One is Linnaean Society Botanical Journal and Linnaean Society Zoological Journal. And these two journals are topmost journals for taxonomists. Okay, so if you say you are a plant taxonomist, so first question is uh, have you got any paper in botanical journal so if you don't have a paper you know you are yet to be a world renowned uh, plant taxonomist okay so that is what if you are a taxonomist you you really would like to have a paper accepted in in your of these journals well respected journals okay so that is what uh, well we do have subscriptions okay in our university we have subscription to both of these journals so may not be a printed subscription but we do have online subscription so you can access all these journals okay so so these are some of these features of this binomial nomenclature which i'm sure you might have heard thousand times right in your all, almost all of your biology textbook deals with this binomial nomenclature but binomial that is the name of species a species every species have binomial which is nothing but scientific name okay so these scientific names or binomials consist of two parts okay one is a species and genus genus followed by the species first is genus name then the species name right genus then species you see that genus g is capital while s is small species or species names we are not capitalizing okay only the genus name we are capitalizing and it is italicized in print so if you're printing something if you are making a thesis of your msc dissertations or mphil dissertation so or an article scientific article or a book if you are authoring 
you have to be very careful to italize okay so if you are writing handwriting for example your uh, uh, assignments or your uh, you know paper or uh, you know uh, sessional or end semester examinations if you are writing on the paper whenever you write this uh, you know binomials you have to underline it okay it's very important to underline it okay so that it that it is right this is that thirdus migratorius is the name of this common american robin there are several things in the course of this course as well as uh, you know you will come across many many different animals and plants and i expect you to remember as much as possible okay at least the common varieties of plants and animals you should know the scientific names okay so this is something like a memory game right there is no science in it i mean actually this is only about naming right as of i'm saying about remembering this name is concerned there is no trick inside other than memorizing okay so i expect you to memorize this stuff okay so that is what because you are you are taking this course a core course on biosystematics and if i ask you a very very simple question i still if you cannot answer those question for example lion what is the scientific name if you don't know how to answer those simple questions then uh, you will be deemed as a fail okay you will get a zero mark in the in this course so you should know at least those very very simple i mean very common okay in india at least right our at least in punjab this locality of the common animals and plants you should know the scientific names okay so you know there is some this is how well, some examples of the scientific name here right this is calistegia cipium sub speed dot american so what is this sub speed that is actually sub species so species you know the species right what is species that is a very big question what a species is okay it's not just simple you cannot define a species in uh, intact okay so there is no consensus among taxonomists on the real definition of the concept species okay so but well accepted definition is by ernst meyer who is a famous uh, 20th century biologist from germany okay so this meyer's definition is that species is a group of individuals which can interbreed to you know uh, successfully interbreed successfully in the sense that it results in offspring right so that is what uh, uh, this one the definition of the species in uh, biological species concept of ernst meyer okay so subspecies is individuals within that species so species is say but within that species the subspecies okay so sometimes it's war war dot in this example it's a mediterranean hawthorn hawthorn flower right tragedius azarolus var pontica so pontica is a variety of that species so these are within species right then there is another thing called f dot see that this is cyclamen hydrifolium f albiflorum right so that is a form albi that is a latin word for white that is why albiflorum florum is again what is flower right so it's white flowered form of ivy leaved cyclamen so, okay so that is yet another of the uh, the plants so these are some of these infra specific names okay there are three kinds now today's lecture you you came across one is subspecies one is variety and one is form okay variety var that is very commonly used also for microbial nomenclature several microbe organisms have this var infra specific names okay so normally it is two parts but mostly you know some some of these plants and microbes are having three parts right but for the zoological nomenclature almost everything every name is of three parts okay so uh, well you cannot say there is no generic form that for human being it's only homo sapiens right but you know this kind of uh, trinomial nomenclature is quite common in animals okay so olive back pipit anthus hodsoni brizoski right so uh, then again beautio jamaicanus borealis red tailed hawk see jamaic 
Jamaicensis. That means that it must be from Jamaica. Where is this Jamaica is then? Yes? Jamaica is basically in the, you know, uh, between North America and South America. Right? So that is the Latin, that is normally we call that area as Latin. So Jamaica is that country. Country. You, have you heard West Indies? Yes, yes. West Indies, that is a very famous cricket playing country, right? So we heard that name West Indies mostly in context with the cricket match. So West Indies is also in a part of the... Yeah, well, every, every place is the, the have biodiversity. But I don't think these are biodiversity hotspots, right? There are certain regions in planet Earth where the, the, the UN have declared biodiversity hotspots. So these are the areas where maximum biodiversity is in. For example, Brazil, okay? They have Amazonian Delta, Amazonian river forest. That is a hotspot. Okay? In India also, we do have hotspots. One is, uh, you know, the Western Cuts. Lots of biodiversity in Western Cuts. That is uh, basically in South India, at Kerala, then a, a part of uh, you know Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, that Western Cuts area, as well as Himalaya. Okay, M mainly on the east of the Himalaya, there is a hot spot. Jamaica. I don't think Jamaica is a hot spot though. I might be wrong as well. Okay. So. Infra specific names are normally written in three parts. The third part is the infra specific name here, right? So, Berezovsky, that is the third name of this olive back pipit, right? This one, olive color, the back is olive color, that's why the name is. So, here, Berezovsky, what could that be? So, it could be a name of a person who discovered that particular, uh, you know, group of a bird, right? And ski ending reminds me or clues me that the person might be from Russia, right? Most of these Russian scientists and Russian, uh, you know, citizens have that ski ending, yeah? So I'm not really sure though. Then Borealis, right? Aurora Borealis. What is that? Aurora Borealis. That is the Northern Lights. That is not basically a binomial nomenclature, okay? Aurora Borealis is nothing but a phenomenon. A physical phenomenon that you observe in Arctic or Northern Canada or all these countries, Scandinavian countries where I said that you can actually see uh, lights that lights up above the pole, North Pole in uh, winter. Okay, so that is what this Borealis is. Okay, so that is what it is, red tail hawk, right? This hawk is again our uh, bird of the state of Punjab. Right? So Punjab state bird is again hawk but that is not this hawk, this is a separate hawk.